Our Messiah is quoted in the book of Luke, chapter 18 and verse 8. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Wow, what a profound question. Perhaps the most profound question in the whole Bible. Because there's a lot of faith today, a lot of types of faith. But there's a specific type of faith he must be looking for to say, really, regardless of how difficult the past has been and the future will be for believers and even non-believers, yes, our Creator shows no partiality. Yes, there's different types of callings for different folks, different people, and there's generational Curses, I prefer to use the word chastening, chastening even unto the third and fourth generation, and it can continue if it's not corrected. And there's blessings as well that will carry on to future generations. But at the end of the day, our Creator shows no partiality, especially, may I say, especially when it comes to giving eternal life, also known as salvation in the Christian world, eternal salvation, not just physical types of salvation and being saved, which leads to the title of this video. Within this playlist, I've titled Post-Messianic Millennium Hope. This is video number four on this playlist as I title No Partiality for All Humanity. First of all, to consider very seriously to consider in the book of John, chapter 6, verses 44 and 45, and also you'll see this in verse 65 of the same chapter, he says, no one, this is the Messiah speaking here, quoting him, no one can come to me unless, unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. Okay, what day is that talking about? Well, I don't want to go off on that tangent here, but verse 45, it says, it is written in the prophets, You're referring to the Tanakh and quoting there, it says, and they shall all be taught by, in the holy name, if you go back to Isaiah 54, verse 13, you'll see the holy name, the yud Hey vav Hey there, and it's pronounced in so many different ways today. And a short version is Yah, like hallelujah. No one's offended by that, as far as I know. If they do, they got a problem, all right? Anyway, in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 34, you see it, that, that our Creator has a plan of teaching everybody in this, this new covenant will be offered an opportunity, as we see in, in the plan of salvation and within the holy days, the annual ones. And we're specifically referring to the seventh one, the final one every year after Sukkot, there's that eighth day. But continue on here in John chapter 6, in verse 45, it says, Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. That's very important to think about, meditate, pray about. What about all? Who have died and the Father never drawed them. I'm not talking about artwork, drawing, and drawed things, past tense, but you know what I'm talking about. Here's another homonym. He's got to draw people to the Messiah. We, it's not an academic conclusion and a faith alone. It's very logical. The truth is very simple, yes, but Really, the Father must be drawing and pricking on our hearts like a guitarist, like a will on a, on a guitar strings, uh, plucking at our heart to draw us to him through the Messiah and to be taught. And so what I propose, if they've died and never been drawn, well, it's not yet, as we see in this plan of salvation through the annual holy days. Does he show partiality? Because why is he calling some people today and some people in the future? It's not always easy to answer these questions. These are very difficult questions. But if they've never been drawn, it sure sounds like partiality. If 
anyone who's never been drawn by him, the Father, to be condemned into this lake of fire and experience a second death. They've never had an opportunity to be drawn. That sure sounds like partiality because it's Yeshua, the Messiah, as we say in Hebrew, his Hebrew name, Yahshua, or Yehoshua, in different ways uh, people pronounce that as well from the Hebrew. He says no one can come to him unless the Father has drawn him. And this is referring to Jewish people, Arabs, uh, even Christians, if they're not really uh, received the Holy Spirit, no matter what your faith is, if you die and never get really drawn in the way he wants you to be drawn and to be held accountable, well, what I propose is you can't be held accountable yet until that day comes for your calling, that your day of judgment, whenever that may be. He's got a plan. But sticking to the title of this video, he shows no partiality. And did you know that there's seven Bible verses? Interesting number seven. Again, we see a lot of sevens in the scriptures that I've pointed out, and so many others do. It's hard not to read the Bible through without seeing this pattern of seven being a, a pattern of completeness and perfection, striving for perfection, working toward it, showing improvement along the way. And the first one I'll bring out is Acts. I'll start with the Brit Hadashah writings, the, the New Testament as it's also known as. Acts chapter 10, verse 32, then Peter, Kepha, opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that, you know, our creator, our father, shows no partiality, you know, referring to uh, his understanding that Old Testament, many people call it the Tanakh as the acronym of the Hebrew scriptures, the Hebrew writings. And then in Romans chapter 2, 11, it says, for there is no partiality with Yah. Here the, the apostle Shaul, Paul, being the author of the book of Romans, and also Ephesians here, he, he wrote in quoting his writing here in chapter 6, verse 9, and you, masters, for those who are masters who are at that time and at any time for that matter he says do the same things to them those who are you are leading over you you are mastering over and back then they had you know, slavery and and uh, trying to do it in a peaceful way i don't want to go off on a tangent on the torah way versus man's ways of slavery not you know his way is a lot better and, and leads him out of slavery eventually but anyway he says threatening don't you're giving up threatening you shouldn't use threatening fear tactics knowing that your own master also is in heaven the, the master of masters king of kings lord of lords the father of fathers even he says here and there is no partiality with him and then Peter again, here's Kepha in First Peter chapter 1, verse 17. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to, to each one's work, not just faith, but our works are important also, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in the flesh, he's referring to, in fear, a healthy kind of fear of like we fear the law of gravity you, know, you can break it in small ways it doesn't hurt you too much but it the more you break it it breaks you so when we break his commandments we should have a fear of the consequences of them but not necessarily that we're always going to this lake of fire for it and in the second death but there's an opportunities for repentance as long as we have life and breath we have opportunity for repentance and forgiveness and salvation my next video on this playlist series will be the unpardonable sins and what are they and that's another topic i don't want to go off in this top this video here but there's also three other verses in the tanakh aka the old testament and so i don't have room on this slide so let's move on to the next slide here for those three we've looked at the four in the new testament but how to Shah writings here in Deuteronomy. Here's the first time you see it in the Holy Scriptures here. Devarim, chapter 10, verse 17. It says, For, there's that holy name again, the Yud Hey Vav Hey, your Elohim is God of gods. 
So the Hebrew there, let me give you a little interlinear plug-in here, is Elohai, the Elohim. And the translators say is God of gods. This is the Elohai of Elohim. And Lord of Lords. You hear there you see the Adonai, the Adonim, the plurality of, of Lord is Lords here. And that's how you'd see it in the Hebrew, as I as I emphasize here. And then it says the great God. Gadol El is the Hebrew right in there. A lot of titles for that holy name. And he is the mighty and awesome who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. Okay, there's, there's a lot to that verse there. Yes, and a lot of cool things I thought I'd share the interlinear with there with you, but he shows no partiality. Yes. And then in Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7, it says here, Now therefore, let the fear of here's that holy name again, Yah, be upon you. Take care and do it. Referring to, of course, being doers of the word, not just hearers. And for there is no iniquity with Yah, your Elohim, no partiality, nor taking of bribes, the way humanity does, the judicial systems do, uh, in many cases, not always, not saying they're all bad, and they all do it out there, so don't jump to conclusions that I'm not saying here, but let's jump to the book of Job here. We see it one time here in the book of Job. As for the Almighty, there's El Shaddai. That's a title for that holy name. We cannot find him. He is excellent in power, even through hard trials that Job was going through, that most of us don't have to go through trials as bad as he did. Nevertheless, here, in judgment and abundant justice, he does not oppress. Verse 24, therefore, people fear him. He shows no partiality. To any who are wise of heart. And Job of all people, all after he didn't even have any sins that commit that caused his trials. Uh, of all people, he could complain and, and say, Wow, he must show partiality because I'm not doing anything wrong. And this is in terms of sins that cause his trials and difficulties. If you haven't read the book of Job, please do. You'll you'll understand what I'm talking about. Most of you have and no no. So let's move on to my next slide here. And Yah overlooks ignorance to a degree as well. Let's let's remember this. I pointed this out in the previous video teaching in the series, this playlist. But he says here in Acts chapter 17, I want to continue on with verse 31 here. He says, truly, these times of ignorance Yah overlooked, but now commands all humanity. We know the Greek and the Hebrew are masculine and feminine languages so when you see the masculine often it's referring to the feminine women as well females obviously in this context as well everywhere for all humanity to repent because he has appointed a day my last video teaching on this series was covering a day of salvation this opportunity everyone's going to have a day a day can be a thousand years so a human lifespan is always under a thousand years especially since the fall in the garden remember he told adam the day that you eat of this you will die he's not talking about a 24-hour day he's talking about a thousand year period uh, right the day so a day can be applied and applicable in different ways. It can, and I covered that in the previous. If you haven't been watching the previous videos on this playlist, please do so at your convenience when you can. Don't want to cover too much ground and repeat myself too much here. So when he says here in verse 31, referring to this playlist that I'm teaching on here, he says, because he has appointed a day, and it's including futuristic here the seventh annual shabbaton this eighth day connected to sukkot the day right after the seven days of sukkot on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man now he's referring to the messiah and he's the head and, he, and the messiah has a body i covered that in the previous uh, playlist video on this as well whom he has ordained 
And we have to be ordained into this as well to become first fruits and called and drawn and so forth. And in this verse continuing, he says, he has given assurance. This is an incredible assurance. I, I must say, that's why I bolded it to you of this and that by all raising him from the dead. So because he was raised, plenty of witnesses and those witnesses were tortured and died holding on to the, that, that, testimony that they saw him risen even the roman guards i right, remember they have no reason to lie and, and they would confess under torture and death if they were lying most people do but when it's the truth and people are willing to die for the truth they do and so we see this assurance that he rose from the dead with plenty of witnesses almost two thousand years ago as i record this video a little less than two thousand but this is my paragraph here so as he overlooked ignorance, yes, he did back then during the writings of the book of Acts. In the past, during the BCE times is the application of that book of Acts there, chapter 17. He will continually for innocently deceived ignorant humans, beings ever since then with no partiality, understanding that he shows no partiality if he's, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and the Messiah is, and, and we see in Malachi that he, that he doesn't change, even the Father, his character. If he doesn't show partiality back then, he won't in the future, in the present, for that matter. So we're all in the same boat, spiritually, Getting back into the middle of my paragraph here, today and throughout human history, those with no access, think about those who never had access or any positive influences to the written Torah or to the New Testament, as, as many people call to it. There were, there were no complete Bibles translated into, into, into their own languages, people who've passed away. It wasn't even translated into other languages other than Greek and Latin and Hebrew and Aramaic until about 500 years ago when it started being translated into English. You know, it was 1,500 years. Most people on earth didn't have it in their native tongue or access for us today to have it translated. And translators don't always do a perfect job, but as we go back to the original languages, so the more we have, the more we're held accountable to. And what if we're not even drawn? We might have access to all these things today, but what if we're not drawn by the Father and we just, we die. Our first experience in the human flesh passes and we were never drawn by the Father. Well, he, he, what I propose is these days of, of salvation are offered through the annual holy days. And the seventh one, the final one every year is so awesome. It's a great white throne judgment, not a terrible or a condemning one for everybody who's in it. Let's remember here in Luke chapter 12, verse 48, but he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes. Now, let me say my understanding of stripes here is the consequences of sins, not not going to fire or lake of fire. It doesn't say anything about going to a lake of fire. He says, yes, they shall be beaten with few, you know, not a lake of fire, Hades or hell, but the stripes are really our own sins. Uh, the consequences of it. Remember King David, he's going to, he got salvation. He was forgiven of terrible sins, but he had consequences for the rest of his physical human life that even the prophet Nathan you know, prophesied to him and he realized. So we have stripes, we have consequences. I'm trying to understand the metaphoric terminology here and applying it more accurately. So you know, people who misapply it get too offended and say, I can't believe this stuff anymore. Continuing in verse 48 here, it says, for everyone to whom much is given from him or her, much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask even more. So again, the more we're given, the more we're held accountable for. So I can't 
judge others. You can't judge me. We can't judge each other because we don't know what's really been given, what's been drawn in the spiritual realm to people. Yes, people can get baptized. It doesn't mean they're going to receive the Holy Spirit. They can be fully immersed in the right name and, and everything. But he understands this. If people are ready for it, are they ready to be held accountable for it? If not, then there's a time and in the future that'll be a lot easier without such powerful adversaries ruling this earth still and uh, the temptations and and when the adversaries are removed it's going to be a whole lot easier and a lot better for a lot of people so he knows all these things and he draws people he you know this is a whole parable of the sower and the seed but as we react and as we obey as we walk and what he gives us faithfully not that we'll be perfectly, but with pure hearts and clean hearts, he's going to keep working with us and he'll give us more. There's a scripture in the book of Acts that says that the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey him. So as we obey, more more is given. We can grow in grace. It's not just something that's given, but we can grow in grace and in knowledge. Just as we grow in knowledge, that's obvious, but grace can also be grown. As, as King David, you know, when we do and we, we were faithful, we walk in his ways for years. Yes, we will slip off, go off the path, but then we get back on it again. Yes, he is merciful. He's great. He's loving. His grace is awesome. But when we just want to do it for the wrong reasons or the wrong motives, then there's not as much grace as, as King Shaul or Saul didn't have as much grace as King David did. And there's a differences between people's hearts and their minds and why they do things and, and why they're repenting and why they're not repenting. And, and are they repeating the same offenses over and over again and, and, and giving up? Don't throw in that towel. Wrestle with him. I have a whole YouTube teaching on wrestling with him, which is an old one, but uh, needs to be updated someday. Nevertheless, let's move on to my next slide here. So beforehand and since then, yes, assuredly, as it says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 15, assuredly, I say to you, Messiah speaking here, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember how sinful and, and, and terrible it was there, but it'll be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment. Here's that day, a day being up to a thousand years or less of judgment than for that city. So notice it, if it's gonna be equalized, everyone's going to hell, all these sinners who never repented and never accepted the Messiah or never accepted the true creator, they're all just gonna to go to this lake of fire and have a second death. Why will it be more tolerable? That's a big question to, to ask and to realize, hmm, I, I don't think the way we've been taught and understood it in the past has been always accurate in the mainstream Christian churches and world. Let's continue on here in Matthew chapter 11, next chapter here, verses 20 through 24. It says, then he, it's talking about the Messiah again, began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done. Here's these miracles. Because they did not repent. He said, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in your presence, in other words, had been done in Tyre and in Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Just like, remember, Nineveh did. So when there's people were very sincere and they were very sincerely sinning, <laughs> but you know, God didn't get, want them to have that opportunity for miracles at that time, but here they had it. And he continues here. Notice this in verse 22, but I say to you, it will be more tolerable. Here I highlight that again, because it's key wording here, more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in that day of judgment than for you. It doesn't say everybody's going to the lake of fire, but it's just saying more tolerable. And you, Capernaum, who were exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. You know, you're so exalted, you want to be brought up to heaven, you're trying to exalt, and you're so haughty. 
For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, near Sodom and Gomorrah, and I think we all know what Sodom means, it would have remained until this day. Sodom would have still remained until this day if they had the mighty works and, and deeds, if they would have seen what, what the Messiah had done. He knows everybody's hearts and what, what would help trigger us and draw us to him in and, and repentance and obedience. After watching humanity and Nineveh with Jonah and so many other stories and generations, our, our father and our creator has been watching humanity. He studied us. He's smarter than we are. He knows how, if we're going to deny him three times or not. Anyway, verse 24 here. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable. For the land of Sodom in that day of judgment than for you. Of course, he's not all of them into the lake of fire or Hades or hell. This is just talking about judgment and chastening and consequences of not repenting. And when more is given, more is expected of us. Now, continuing here with this idea of more tolerable because... No partiality. He doesn't show partiality. Because the more miracles he gives us, the more is required of us. If we experience a miracle, say we're healed of cancer or something dramatically to where it's like, okay, this, the more greater the miracle is, the more we should say, oh, okay, I better seek him. I haven't known him well enough. I want to know him better. If, I've, if we think, Even if we think we've known him well enough, we should say, I want to know him better. I want to understand the scriptures better. Sometimes people have this mindset that, oh boy, if I understand more, then more is held accountable to me. I just want to believe and be saved. I just want to be saved. If we're overly fixated on just being saved and having eternal life, that could be a dangerous mindset because if we want miracles, well, that's hypocritical. It's like, I want miracles. I don't want to know more. I just want more miracles, more healings, and, and uh, more prosperity gospels happening in my life. Well, if, if he gives us more, he's expecting more of us to seek him more, to understand, to walk more accurately. And when he sees that we're not going to anyway, he may give us some miracles and, and see that and say, okay, why should I give him more miracles? Why should I give him more healings? If they're going to just keep living the wrong lifestyle, not change and not seek me first, the kingdom as well. Well, the same goes for unpardonable sins. He knows if he does too much for us we'll, and we're still going to commit unpardonable sins. Well, it's, it's hard to commit them when we're ignorant no, we can't commit them when they're ignorant, when we don't know better. It has to be willful, it has to be intentional and say, I don't care and so forth. Well, yeah, there's, that's a whole topic, which is very challenging to understand accurately, which leads to my next playlist video series on this topic. So please stay tuned or ready. If it's uploaded already, that's great. You can watch it at your convenience. It'll be titled something like, What Are the Unpardonable Sins? So thank you for watching and listening to this video and any others that I've recorded in the past and on this playlist and for any of the following ones that I may record and edit and upload and connect onto this playlist as well as my YouTube channel, Yah Willing. Thank you.